This is fabulous. When I first came to China in 1978, we went to the Summer Palace and we walked the long corridor in the Summer Palace in 1978. China was very much like the picture we had in the West of Mao China. It was very, very poor. Uh, it was very gray, dusty, and everyone was very similar. There were no private cars. There were many, many bicycles and many buses. No Coca-Cola advertising. It was very, very, very different from today. The average income in China is today 20 times higher than when I came the first time. So everything is different. It's totally different. It has moved from being a poor, backward society to being a modern society where there is a large middle class who is very well off and there are still a few poor. but. The industrialization and the reorganization of China has been absolutely total. And as the uh, head of the OECD said in, in the meeting today, this has been phenomenal, you know, the change that has occurred. What Deng did was, of course, to be brave enough to start a practice-based experiment. You know, he basically said that we should learn from practice and then try. It was very impressive that he managed to convince everyone to join in that effort. And now we know that it did succeed. The most important lesson one can learn from the last 40 years is the fact that it proves that the Chinese system of governance is capable of removing poverty much better than any other system of governance in the world. Uh, that uh, socialism without Chinese characteristics has actually lifted 700 million people from poverty to a higher income. And that's a very important lesson. And that's one of the reasons why I think it is so important to stress the fact that China did actually lift a lot of people out of poverty over the last several decades. It was not done by other systems of governance. I should have said one of the main reasons my areas of work have been of course, in environmental protection. I was the deputy director general of WWF, the Panda organization. So, of course, the rolling uh, panda uh, repair or rescue operation is among the things I was responsible for in the 1990s. So I've also been to that, those parts of the country, which are, of course, wonderfully beautiful. The natural beauty of China is just what President Xi said, you know, the green mountains are mountains of gold. And uh, I'm very, very happy to see that uh, the focus of the Chinese government on reducing greenhouse gas emissions have increased steadily over the last 10 to 15 years. And that now China is basically the global leader in, in cutting CO2. This century will be the century of China. The last century was the, the century of the United States. You know, that crossover point might have been in 2017, and uh, that this is as I expected. And I'm very pleased and very proud of China that, that uh, in Davos, President Xi went out and said exactly what should be said, you know, that it is important to stick together you know, and to fight for the future of mankind as one unit rather than, you know, scrabbling between the nations. You will succeed, you know, China will be a great place in, in, in 2050.